Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck. I'm just clearing all the decks I've built before the next expansion comes out. And uh, next in store we have a Teamer Song of Creation combo deck that's very capable of winning on turn 3, although more consistently on turn 4. And it is a deck that has to basically mulligan towards Song of Creation, since the deck doesn't do much without the 4-man enchantment in play. But uh, if it gets going, it can usually win on the same turn that it casts the Song of Creation. A 4-man enchantment saying we may play an additional land on each of our turns, and when we cast a spell, a draw 2 cards, and at the beginning of our end step, discard our hand. So we want to make sure to win the game the same turn we cast Song of Creation, so the drawback of discarding our hand never comes up and the way this deck operates is by playing a whole bunch of free spells so we can draw two cards for a free essentially to keep the engine going and if you'll take a look at the deck basically the entire deck except for a few win conditions and enablers is cards we can cast for free we've got ornithopter as a zero mana o2 flyer that will draw two cards mox amber generates one mana if we have a legendary creature in play and we've got emery to combo with the mox amber and that's an important part to make the mana necessary to cast our thassa's oracle which is going to be our win condition once we have very few cards left in the deck We've got a Rose Thorn Acolyte, which if we have green mana, we can use the Seasonal Ritual Adventure, making whatever mana we want. So essentially playing it for free. We've got Chamber Sentry that we can cast for X equals zero as another free spell. Same with Stone Coil Serpent and Ugin's Conjurant. So all these spells we can cast for free. Eventually we need to find a copy of Mox Amber, which we can then play alongside a one mana Emery. Thanks to all those Ornithopters and Mox Ambers in play, discounting Emery's mana cost and then we can play an Emery for just one blue mana. And then once we have an Emery in play, our Mox Amber starts generating blue mana as well. And then by playing a bunch of Mox Ambers and floating blue mana, we can eventually cast a Thassa's Oracle to win the game when we have very few cards left in the library. And the only other card in the deck is a Growth Spiral to potentially help us cast Song of Creation on turn three and start going off a turn ahead of schedule. And sometimes we can also cast Grow Spiral mid combo just by uh, putting an extra land in play. It essentially costs one mana to cast Grow Spiral. So it's not uh, too big of a deal if we just need another way to draw more cards if we're stuck and don't have any zero cost cards left in our hand. And then Emery is also nice to potentially get the combo going again. If we do somehow fail and draw a bunch of lands in a row, then Emery can still help us replay a spell from the graveyard to then kickstart Song of Creation once again to hopefully combo off. And uh, we can also play Emery to just mill a few cards from the top of our deck if we already have Thassa's Oracle in hand without a risk of milling the last copy of Thassa's Oracle and not be able to win the game anymore. And then, of course, our four copies of Song of Creation, which we need to mulligan for in every opening hand. And then the mana base, we only have 22 lands since we can't afford to play too many lands in this deck, otherwise we risk fizzling out and drawing too many lands along the way. And then of course uh, for Fabled Passage is also pretty important in the deck, since if we do take a few mulligans at the start of the game, there's a high chance that we want to put a Thassa's Oracle on the bottom, since it's not a useful card to set up the initial combo. But we don't want Thassa's Oracle to be the last card in the deck, because otherwise we won't be able to draw it and then cast it before milling ourselves. So we do need a way to potentially shuffle it if it's on the bottom, so Fabled Passage helps there. And then uh, we've got uh, four Cantrite Triomes to provide every color of mana in the deck. We've got Hinterland Harbor, which comes into play untapped most of the time. Breeding Pool. We've got uh, two Stomping Ground, two Steam Vents, and then a couple basics to search up with Fabled Passage. It is possible we can play a few ad additional check lands instead of all these shock lands, but I'm just playing it safe here since we don't want to uh, miss out on comboing off just because our land comes into play tapped on a critical turn. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. We've got Song of Creation, so don't think I can mulligan. Although it is a pretty weak hand, all things considered, since I'm missing a zero mana card to kickstart my combo. And we have Thassa's Oracle in hand. And I'm missing green mana, so it's probably about as bad as it gets for having Song of Creation in it, but I think I still keep. And then if we find green mana, we might be okay. I'm also not forced to combo off as soon as I can cast Song of Creation, I can always decide to wait an extra turn. It kind of depends under how much pressure we are. I 
I think I'm just gonna cast Oracle here to help me find green mana. So I think we submit zero. And then if I mill the last Oracle, that's pretty bad. So hopefully that doesn't happen. We'll just stay back. Now hopefully my opponent's not playing a blue-green counterspell deck. Don't have another forest I can fetch, sadly. Alright, Risen Reef, that's fine. Alright, I drew the last oracle. So now the problem is if I fizzle out with this Song of Creation, I'll discard the second oracle. So I basically don't have a chance of winning through Thassa's oracle anymore. So I think I wait. Like I could cast Song, cast Serpent, and if I find an untapped green source, I can keep going. But if I don't, it's pretty bad. So I think we just spiral here. And then next turn, I can uh, combo off, although I guess I only have the one green source, so I will still have to draw an extra green source to play the Acolytes. Sir so opponent stuck on four lands, he discards Uro, that's fine. I'm ready to draw. So again, we're not under a ton of pressure. I don't have to go for it now. So I could just cast an Emery. And that significantly improves my chances of uh, comboing off successfully next turn. And since we have the second Oracle in hand, there's no risk of milling all my win conditions. So I can play a free Chamber Sentry from the Graveyard with Emery. More Risen Reefs, that's fine. Alright, so I think we're ready to go for it now. So remember, Fable Passage doesn't get green mana at the moment. But there's my Hinterland Harbor, so now I should be able to combo off pretty reliably. Still have an extra land drop available as well. This is my last Acolyte, so I can make blue mana afterwards. Although I could still make green for Grow Spiral, I guess. Don't think it's going to be necessary either way. Just got to keep an eye on our library size. Can also replay Mox Hammer from the graveyard with Emery if we need access to more mana. Could even cast another Song of Creation here. But it's not going to be needed. I guess an Emery will speed things up a little bit more.
Could have also kept the original Emery if I still wanted to get something out of the graveyard. But uh, playing another Oracle should do it here. Plenty of blue devotion. Maybe should have played around uh, Mystical Dispute by playing a few Mox Ambers first. Three cards in library, six devotions, so even if they were to bounce an oracle, it's not gonna do anything. Alright, and our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we have Song of Creation, so no need to mulligan. So just going to hold all these free spells until after we play Song of Creation. We'll need one more land. Could always cast a Acolyte on turn 3. And uh, funnily enough, we're playing against the Treasure Hunt deck. So the two non-interactive combo decks against each other. I probably want to leave Forest in the deck so I can fetch it up later to enable the Acolyte. Opponent has to discard to hand size. So I can cast Acolytes. Or I can Grow Spiral, hoping to draw lands for next turn. I think I'm gonna Spiral. Alright, no, did not get there yet. So if I don't get there on my next draw step, I'm gonna regret not casting the Acolyte. But by keeping Acolyte in hand, we keep an extra free spell to make it less likely that we fizzle out. So next turn our opponent could kill us with that Zenith Flare, although they might be a little bit short. So we might have an extra turn afterwards. But I'm fully capable of going off next turn if we draw land. Alright, had to be an untapped land. Had to be more specific. But I don't think there's 20 cycling lands in the graveyard yet. So we should have another turn here. So they're gonna treasure hunt again. They're also playing the version with Thassa's Oracle, interesting. Sanctuary back treasure hunts. So they are definitely capable of killing me next turn. But I'm just going to go off here. And I have two extra land drops remaining, so we have a few extra cards we can cast alongside the free spells. I did draw the forest already, so I guess I could do that now to make some mana with uh, Acolytes. We already have Oracle in hand, so if I find Emery, I'm not afraid of milling a few cards. Do need to find Emery, probably, to be able to make blue mana for Oracle, although... With the extra land drops, I guess I could have also just played two blue lands and got there. Uh, so let's see, play another Conjurance. Can also just make blue mana with uh, Seasonal Ritual. I guess make another green for now. And now I can make blue and cast a one mana emery. And now my Mox Amber starts producing mana. 
and our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're facing a Yurion deck. There's Song of Creation. And we'll put Oracle on the bottom, but we can shuffle it back with Fable Passage. Just hoping to draw some lands. Opponent on a Gate Field of the Dead deck, most likely. Alright, so no fourth land just yet, but we've got four free spells in hand, so pretty high chance that we can combo off the turn we play Song of Creation. So we'll just wait. Guild Summit is fine. I can cast the Acolyte to next turn, cast Song of Creation, I guess it's worth it. Put on cast Roots, draws two with Guild Summit, but uh, that probably leaves them out of any significant interaction. And another guild summit. Alright, I think it's go time. Blue and green mana is what we need here, so harbor's a fine land to play. And then we have one extra land drop remaining. So now the only risk is potentially milling all the Thassa's Oracles with Emery, so I want to make sure to draw as many cards as possible before playing Emery. So we draw the Oracle before potentially milling it. There's Emery, but I'm gonna wait and try and draw Oracle first. I want to play a second Mox Amber before we play Emery, though. Since I want to be able to make mana with it. We're about halfway. Yeah, still hold on to Emery for now. Oracle can make green. So let's see, am I forced to play Mox Amber or Emery at this point? Could also play Gross Spiral, I suppose. Alright, there's Oracle, so now... I'm safe to play Emery. Seven cards remaining. Make blue. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one.
All right, this seems like a fine hand. Hopefully no counter spells. Uh oh, opponent's keeping up mana. It's not a good sign. Cutthroat, so a blue flash deck is gonna be a pretty bad matchup. So this might be a matchup where I need to bait them into countering some of my actual creatures, like uh, Chamber Sentry. Alright, Syncopate, that's a win in my book. One fewer counter spell for Song of Creation. Now of course we are depleting some of our resources here to eventually combo off. But without Song of Creation there's no combo to begin with. Since we drew a second one I'm fine jamming. I'll leave the forest in the deck for Rose Thorn Acolytes. Get spell pierced. Eh, we'll try again next turn. We're also under pressure from the cutthroat, so we can't afford to sit here and do nothing. Alright, retort, so that's probably game over. Our best chance is that they had a bunch of unsummons or assassin scatters in hand that didn't line up against what we were doing. Well. I guess I'll uh, try my luck here. Alright, we're in business. Now of course I could keep a counter spell for my win condition, but we can maybe cast two oracles in the same turn. I would like to draw the second oracle before playing Emery, so I can potentially cast both of them. Although I will also require enough blue devotion to win the game with the first oracle while not decking myself and still being able to cast a second oracle. So it's probably going to be pretty convoluted to do that. So I don't know if I can actually beat the counterspell if they have one left. So for now, I guess I can play Emery. Play Mox first. Did not mill the oracle. So we'll try and stockpile a bunch of blue mana.
Still have a few land drops remaining. So 15 cards left. So have to be pretty careful with how we measure out our last couple cards in an attempt of actually potentially winning the game. And we did draw the second Oracle. So 13 cards. So I've got to cast a few more free spells. So I cast one more free spell here. So now we're down to five cards. Play Oracle, go down to three, Devotion is four. And then we have an extra Oracle we can cast without decking. All right, looks like we got there. Well, there was a surprising turn of events. I thought for sure we were dead, but got lucky to draw the third Song of Creation and still combo off. So this is definitely the type of matchup that's going to beat us most of the time. But uh, if you're lucky, if you manage to force them to counter one of your non-Song of Creation spells, then of course you increase your chance of potentially comboing off. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Even got a redundant song in case one gets countered or discarded. Also, probably won't be the case against Basic Forest. Maybe a tokens deck. Could decide to play Acolyte if we don't draw lands to make sure I can cast Song. Alright, Night of Autumn. Technically a way of destroying enchantments, but we usually win the game on the spots. So to Acolyte or not to Acolyte? I'm not under a huge amount of pressure, so I don't necessarily need to go for it next turn. And if I use Acolyte, I have one fewer free spell to then combo off. So I think this turn I'm just going to grow Spiral. And then uh, next turn we can maybe go for it. Usually want to wait until the last second to combo off, even though it is sometimes cooler if you can uh, win a turn sooner or as soon as possible. And in fact, I might just play an Emery here. And then uh, if Emery survives, I'm pretty much guaranteed to win next turn with uh, Song of Creation. Another Mox in the Graveyard, very useful too. So not sure what type of deck my opponent's playing. More Sapling Migrations. Alright, time to go for it. And then we want to keep Breeding Pool untapped since that's the most useful land, letting me use Acolyte and play my Thassa's Oracle. So, play Song, play a Mox Amber. And we'll get this party started. I should consider fetching here to thin out the deck. Uh, although I don't have basic force left, so there's only one island remaining. And there's my Thassa's Oracle. So 
So now that we have Oracle in hand, I can play Emery just to mill a few cards if I want. Use Acolyte to make more green. About 20 cards remaining. So let's see, we are running pretty low on free cards. So is it time to play Emery or do I play Gross Spiral? I guess Gross Spiral is fine since we have a lot of spare mana. Thirteen cards left. All right, that should do it. Five. So I'll play Oracle. And Devotion is four. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Let's take a couple mulligans. All right, this might be a rough one. All right, it's a one lander, but uh, got to keep. And then we get to put two oracles on the bottom and a Mox Amber, and one more, I guess a Stone Coil. Well, it's gonna be difficult to win on three cards, but not impossible. Zero point on a graveyard synergy deck. Creeping chill. Alright, second land is good. Two to go. Not under too much pressure, at least. Gets rid of all those non-land cards from the top of my deck. I appreciate it. All right. And then if I fetch, I put these back in circulation. So I want to wait since I want to draw land here. Gaia's Blessing, sure. So I guess that's gonna shuffle those back into my deck. So that's gonna mess with my plan of not shuffling with Fabled Passage. Glow Spore applies a bit more pressure. I suppose in a weird way Gaia's Blessing could have messed with my combo by shuffling cards back at the last second. Alright, so I'll play an Emery. I guess I can play Emery this turn unless I want to play Ornithopter or Mox Amber, which I don't really want to. So is it worth it? I don't have a Mox Amber in the graveyard to make more mana. Yeah, actually, don't think it's worth it. We'll just play Emery next turn. Gotta keep those free spells in hand to draw with Song of Creation. And then if I do draw land next turn, there's a pretty high chance I can just cast Emery for one mana, thanks to these two artifacts. So 
So taking 4 down to 10. Not a glow spar. Alright, so don't have much time here to combo off. Did not mill Mox Amber, but next turn I can play Mox if I don't draw land. If Emery is still alive. So I'll just take 6, 7, 8 to 2, although they could hard cast Creeping Chill and kill me. But if I block a Stitcher Supplier and take 7, I still die to Creeping Chill. And if I trade Emery for Glow Spore, I'm all in on drawing a land. So do we think they have Creeping Chill in hand? They've not been doing much else, so they could easily have one in hand here. I don't know, I think I just take it. And it looks like they're just escaping the Arachnir. If I block a Supplier and they mill over Creeping Chill, that would also kill me, so that's why I didn't block it. Alright, gotta go for it. And then I can't play any shock lands untapped. So I still need to draw Hinterland Harbor or another fetch land. I do have basic forest in the deck, I believe. Just double checking. And then we have an extra land drop remaining too for the turn. But I want to fetch as soon as possible to thin out the deck. Alright, there's my Oracle, so things are coming together. Emery can get back Mox Amber to make additional mana. And my opponent concedes. Yeah, they were pretty likely dead to the combo here. Don't think we were fizzling anymore at this point. Well, so even on a mulligan to three cards, our deck is capable of winning, although not if we're under a ton of pressure. Luckily our opponent was pretty slow out of the gate. Sweet. So overall I've been pretty happy with how the deck's been performing. It has gone through a few iterations. At first I also tried to play Mindstone as another way of ramping into Song of Creation on turn three, and as an artifact that synergizes quite well with Emery. But the problem there is that I found myself fizzling mid-combo, since I didn't have a high enough density of free spells in the deck, and that's where I added the full playset of Rose Thorn Acolyte. The Acolyte also an adventure creature that synergizes with the Song of Creation. If we do fizzle out as a creature we can play out of exile to kickstart a combo once again. Although in today's video, as you could see, the deck's very reliable once it starts comboing since we have such a high density of free spells, so I don't find myself drawing into a land pocket and not being able to combo off in the same turn we play Song, so that's nice. And uh, yeah, overall the addition of the fetch lands I think is also good to shuffle Oracle back into our deck. If it's at the bottom, if we take a few mulligans, which was also potentially relevant in that last game we played. So yeah, not the most interactive deck in the world, so it might not be super interesting for the opponent. But uh, combo decks should have a place in Magic Arena as well. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.